with us, Captain Tom Bunn here with me on set. 40 years, an aviation expert. And uh, Captain, again, let's 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 reset here for folks who, who might be joining us uh, for the first time this evening. When you look at damage like this, uh, when you look at, at, at damage like that, how surprised are you that the numbers of, of, of the dead, the numbers of the injured, are where, they, are where they are. When I first saw the pictures, I was really wondering if it was going to be amazing if anyone survived. It, it's phenomenal. Um, apparently, the flight attendants did a, an outstanding job of getting people off the airplane. And fortunately, according to uh, Mr. Levy, then they didn't have fire initially, they had smoke initially, yeah. and so some of them were able to get off. But I thought I would point out that the area where the fire appears to have begun, um, there are fuel lines that run between the two wings that go under the cabin at that point. Fuel lines that run horizontally or vertically? H horizontally okay. between the two wings. Because, you, if, for example, if you use too much fuel from one side of the plane, you want to balance it. You can balance fuel by sending it ah. through those lines. So there are lines in there. If those were damaged, apparently they were in the crash, then that I believe probably was the source of the fire, but it didn't start so quickly that some people uh, couldn't get off the airplane. You know, and, and again, and, and someone alluded to this earlier, the fact that this plane was landing, we, we know that there obviously was not as much fuel um, as there would have been some 12 to 14 hours earlier. Right. But there still is a considerable amount of fuel because when you reach your destination airport, you have to have enough fuel to go to another airport, make a landing there, plus have uh, 30 minutes to an hour of extra fuel just for holding. So there's still a considerable amount of fuel.